All right, folks, this is the Buckeye Blitz. I am Tito, Jeff Dudall. Follow me on the X, at Fit Happens. Thanks so much for tuning in. Inching closer and closer uh, that Ohio State-Indiana game to start the season for them, the start of college football. Uh, it's a, We're, uh, what, I think 11 days out, maybe, from the start of college football, and maybe is it 18 days out from Ohio State-Indiana. So lots to talk about today. Thanks so much for, again, spending time with us here. This is the Buckeye Blitz on Fan Stream Sports, powered by DSP Media. Get a couple of things that happened uh, just recently. Uh, Bennett Christian, a tight end for Ohio State, he's been suspended for the season because he tested positive for a banned substance uh, back in January. Uh, Ryan Day opened his press conference yesterday talking about that. Bennett Christian released a statement um, saying that this all could have been avoided if he would have just you know, communicated with the nutritional staff at Ohio State and said, hey, look, is this thing okay to take? Turns out whatever was in it, it wasn't okay to take. Um, so... Um, Anyway, uh, so he is out for the season now because of that uh, banned substance. He is—he can still practice with the team, which is a good sign, um, but he just can't play in any games and will not be available. I think January 4th or something, January 2024, so I guess after the season ends, whenever Ohio State finishes playing, hopefully with a victory in the uh, national championship game. But um, he is banned from playing in games until then. But like I say, it's a good thing that he can still practice with the team at least. Uh, Court Williams, a linebacker, he's out for the season. Uh, recently converted linebacker with the uh, torn ACL. So um, he's going to miss the entire season for Ohio State. That's also another loss um, for uh, for the Buckeye defense. Um, other news, uh, Ryan did talk yesterday to the media after practice. The, the Buckeyes had a scrimmage on Saturday. It was closed to the public, but... Um, you know, and so we don't have a lot of the details on that. Uh, he was asked a, a bunch of times uh, during his press conference about the quarterback competition, and he had said that you know he's hoping that uh, he was asked you know does he hope there's some separation you know making the decision easier, and he said yeah he hope that way both guys they're doing you know they're they're making great plays they're also doing some things they wish they didn't wish they had to think back, but he's not it doesn't sound like he's any nearer to making a decision on this on who's going to start against Indiana. And I'm still getting the vibe that maybe you're going to see the dual quarterback system to start the season, um, which I still have nightmares about as a Buckeye fan because I can remember going doing it twice and not going well either time. The first time was the um, under the John Cooper um, um, regime when Stanley Jackson and Joe Germain were the two quarterbacks, and he would rotate them a lot in games. And, um, and it, it, Ohio State won a bunch of games, but then at the end of the, it seemed to fracture the team a little bit as far as there were some guys like, man, I think Stanley's better for us. Other people thought Joe was better for them. And then near the end, of the, I think it was a Michigan game that year, if I'm not mistaken, a long time ago. But um, where he said, okay, Joe's a starter, Joe's playing. And uh, it ended up not going great for Ohio State. Now, it may have further fractured the team. Under Urban Meyer with the JT Barrett, Cardale Jones situation coming off the national championship year. And he said, uh, he, you know, he, Cardiel was going to go pro, it looked like. They decided to come back for a, another year, and then they had a quarterback competition. Seemed very um, cordial with each other. Like I, don't think, I think they were rooting for each other, but nonetheless, when Cardiel struggled, JD came, JT came in, and I think, again, that, that worked against the team because they could never get a rhythm going um, that season, offensively at least. So that's the, uh, that's the other concern to you about it. We'll see what happens um, with – uh, with that quarterback situation, see if a starter does get named uh, between Kyle McCord and Devin Brown. Uh, what else? The first AP poll came out yesterday. The, uh, we had the coaches poll before, and in that one it was Georgia, Michigan, Alabama, Ohio State. And I said at the time it would not surprise me if Ohio State leapfrogged Alabama in the AP poll. That They did, in fact, do that. Ohio State third in that one, Alabama fourth. Um, top ten is pretty much the same after that for these, uh, for these polls. But the Buckeyes, not surprised that they are – um, that they're third in that one. I think that uh, those are your four best teams right there in the country going in at least. Uh, the Buckeyes picked up a four-star re- uh, four-star wide receiver recruit, uh, Jeremiah McClellan. He uh, is from the class of 2024. Now the Buckeyes have got um, two five-star recruits and one four-star recruit in the class as far as receivers go for the class of 2024. Um, McClellan made his decision, uh, and uh, Brian Hartline, he does it again. Look, we've had some rough news lately. Um, on the recruiting front, on the defensive side, with some guys that we thought Ohio State would possibly end up getting the end up losing, but uh, this is a good get for them. He's out of St. Louis, and he's a dynamic receiver. And again, that wide receiver room just keeps getting better. Um, another new, uh, other news also: Ottawa Glandorf's Colin White, who's a basketball player in the class of 2024, he committed to Ohio State. Ottawa Glandorf up back up in uh, it's up in Northwest Ohio, but Chris Holtman gets him. 
And uh, this kid is a, he can play multiple positions. He's a great shooter. Uh, and uh, so Chris Holtman gets him. That's a good recruit for the class of 2024 for Holtman. He still keeps uh, putting up good recruiting classes and getting good people in there. So um, quality uh, players in there. So um, also I saw this other article too I want to bring up and it's uh, about transfers. And there were in the last, tw- the last 12 months, there've been 2,400 for the 2022, 2023 um, transfer portal, transfer the, the cycle. There were over 2,400 players entered the portal, which is a, an amazing number. And so, uh, the thing on the athletic, they looked at the schools um, that lost the most, had most kids enter, and who had the fewest kids enter the transfer portal. And obviously, you expect, you know, Colorado, Deion Sanders, he came in and turned up, you know, turned the whole program around. So they had the most people transfer out. Uh, by the way, this is by Max Olson who put this out on the Athletic. It was it, it, very fascinating to me. So more than 20 born went in, and um, Colorado was the one who lost the most players. Uh, they had 57 players enter the transfer portal, um, and uh, they transferred out. Ole Miss had 31, Oregon had 31, uh, Arizona State 30, Cal 28, Texas A&M and Arkansas 27. That's how many players they had enter the transfer portal. So lots of turnover there. Then when you look at the ones who had the fewest departures, and this is the part that was fascinating to me, the fewest departures, uh, Oregon State only lost seven players to the transfer portal. Ohio State was second with nine. So that's a huge difference. That speaks a lot, I think, to the culture Ryan Day has created at Ohio State. To only have nine people transfer out of the program, I think is phenomenal. Says a lot about what he does. Uh, what he can do, what, he, what the, the culture they have there at Ohio State, the fact they're not losing these guys. Now, Dion's was by design, comes into a take a one-win team, says we're going to revamp this, you know, and, and change the culture altogether. But among all the schools, though, that are on this list, you know, the, the, I'm sorry, the 10 that lost the fewest amount. I'll give you the rest of them here. Just to, But Oregon State, 7, Ohio State, 9. You had three schools tied for third, Iowa, UCLA, Wake, Wake Forest, all lost uh, 10 through the transfer portal. Illinois, Iowa State, Kansas, and Notre Dame all lost 11. Boston College, Clemson, NC State, Pitt, Vanderbilt all lost 12. Ohio State, clearly the most consistent program in that group. Uh, you know, Notre Dame competes. Or, competes. They are competitive, very competitive, and always in the talk for maybe a playoff berth. But all those other schools, sure, they, they didn't lose players, but they also don't have the, the dominant culture as far as football goes that Ohio State has. So uh, interesting thing on that, that we get the athletic, that is – um, where I got that story from, I thought it was um, interesting. A uh, couple of things from coaches from the, the, the school or the, the state up north, I should say. Uh, Jim Harbaugh suspension. He was supposed to be suspended four games for what he did with um, some. There was well, the first part was doing uh, recruiting, contacting recruits during a dead period of time. He wasn't supposed to, so that happens. Um, and then when the NCAA comes to him and questions about it. He was evasive, was not forthcoming. Uh, even the period he may have lied even to the NCAA, which is what we know got Jim Tressel and a few players in a lot of trouble, specifically Tressel, I guess, at Ohio State, which uh, ended up leading to his um, resignation. But so um, Harbaugh lied to the NCAA, it looks like, or was not truthful with them. And so it came down, there's going to be a four-game suspension for him, first four games of this year, all cupcakes, uh, like UNLV's in there. I can't remember, Bowling Green's in there. Uh, the toughest game is against Rutgers, their fourth game. But anyway, it was a week suspension because Harbaugh would be allowed to coach the team during the week, just be suspended on game day. So he couldn't be in the stadium on Saturday. But hell, who, you know, any, any of us could probably coach Michigan against those opponents and walk away with four wins. Well, now the NCAA Infractions Committee has rejected that. They have not approved that suspension. So what happens now is there's a couple of things that could happen. The NCAA could reopen the investigation, go dig in deeper, and level a, a more significant suspension or a suspension in the middle of the season, which would be much more uh, difficult for Michigan to overcome. They could do that. They could wait till after the season and put some kind of suspension on them. They, Michigan could try to self-impose something. They could go back and say, okay, we're going to self-impose this suspension. Um, they're not going to do a bowl ban or anything like that. That'd be that'd be foolish to do that. But um, Or, like I said, or nothing could happen at all. There's talk that Harbaugh may be long for the NFL anyway after this season. So we'll see. But um, it'll be interesting to follow that and see if the NCAA, who is completely toothless now, does anything at all with Jim Harbaugh and these violations and his uh, lack of cooperation with the NCAA. One more note, um, Tom Izzo, 
he was uh, on a podcast with Chris Holtman was talking about Chris Holtman. And I, I thought this was interesting. I, I know he meant it as a compliment, and it was it's great that he said these things, but uh, Tom Izzo, though, may have put a little bit of heat on, uh, inadvertently, put in a little put a little heat on Chris Holtman. And I want to get the quote exactly right on this. Um, this was, uh, I'll find what it was. He was on, a, it was on um, Holtman's podcast, More Than Coach Speak. He said, I think you've done a hell of a job there. It's not an easy job. You're at a school where football is so big, and yet you're starting to blend it. That's what I did. He obviously is at Michigan State. Football and basketball can coexist together. You're a big part of the consistency. You did not crumble last year through a tough five to six weeks. Tough understatement on that one. Uh, maybe the best. That's maybe the best thing you did. You just won't realize it uh, until four or five years from now when you're final. When you're in a final four, winning a national championship, you'll look back at that one day and say, "Wow." So, uh, saying in four or five years that not the Tom Izzo's got the exact timeline on those things, but that does. Uh, hold some weight when you got a coach, a Hall of Fame coach like Tom Izzo saying things like that about where Ohio State should be. I think Ohio State will certainly be more competitive this year than they were last year. Uh, great recruiting class has come in. Lots of talent coming back still. So um, the team's got to be better. And, you know, when I think about last year, the struggles they had, you know, the, the long losing streak, the tough losses. It all started with the game against North Carolina when they had the game in the bag and then lost at the end. But when you look at it, <clears throat> And to put it in perspective, Louisville, who's got a tremendous basketball tradition, right? They've got a wonderful, uh, a wonderful program there for years. Have won national championships. Had a great players going to the NBA. They've had a Louisville uh, doesn't have the football program to compete with basketball like Ohio State does. So basketball is Louisville. That's that's what they focus on. Their team last year went four and twenty-eight, the worst record I believe in school history. Four and twenty-eight last year is what they're trying to come back from. If last year is the worst year we have under Holtman, we'll be okay. So um, I expect Big Ten, uh, you know, better standing in the Big Ten this year. I expect NCAA tournament this year. Obviously, in 2024, adding UCLA, USC, Oregon, and Washington is going to change some of the complexities of the schedules that they play and the toughness. UCLA's got a great program, obviously, in basketball as well. But um, we'll see how that evolves next year. But I do expect the 2023-2024 Buckeyes to be in the NCAA tournament, and that should be the expectation every single year. So, all right, uh, we'll get more news. We'll get things more out to you as it, as it pops up. Um, the Ohio State's, you know, doing practices now, and they're in pads, and they're hitting each other, which is always fun to hear from the coaches and players. We'll see uh, the next time we have some availability and we'll, uh, with the media, and we will uh, relate that kind of stuff to you, what gets said and what to glean from all of that. But this has been Buckeye Blitz. Uh, you can follow me. Again, on X, at Fit Happens. Like, listen, subscribe, share. This is on uh, fanstreamsports.com. Uh, the Daily Blitz for the Buckeyes, powered by DSP Media. Go Bucks! Have a great day.